Okay, yo, what's up? It's Pleco here. Um, I recently was on uh, one of the subreddits. I don't remember exactly which subreddit it was. I think it might have been Summer School. Maybe it was AD Carry Mains. I don't know. It was one of them. Um, either way, I came across a post about um, from a guy named X Lalo on Europe West, um, who was specifically asking about some of his games. He thinks he's doing pretty well. And he's just not able to come away with the win in a lot of them. Um, he was particular to particularly talking about when he's playing Lucian. Um, he has quite a few games played on Lucian. Um, and he has a 29% win rate on the champion. Despite having a really good KDA of 3.12. And a really high CS per minute at 9.6. He's sitting in gold... Um, Gold won currently, with a little over 200 games played. So um, he wants somebody to take a look at his Lucian games to see exactly what he's doing wrong, because obviously 29% win rate when you feel like you're performing is, uh, that sucks. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to take a look at one of his games that he played here. Um, and this one specifically, he just told me one of the Lucian games. This one specifically because he did the least damage on his team. And he was playing into a comp that actually should have been fairly decent for Lucian to play into. Um, he has really high CS numbers, 30 more than the high, the second highest person in the game. Uh, he's about 9 CS per minute, maybe 8.5 CS per minute in this game. Um, but we're going to see what he's not doing um, to maximize damage. My, my assumption is maybe he's not playing aggressive enough on Lucian. And he's trying to maybe stay back and play a little bit more of a scale game. And at that point, you know, you don't do that with Lucian because, you know, Lucian is a high damage, uh, an early game high damage uh, champion. So you want to really push your leads in the early to mid game where your champion is the strongest. So um, we're going to go ahead. We're going to hop in. We're going to see what's kind of going on with it here. So we are going to wait for the game to load in. All right, so we've got X Lalo taking exhaust into hmm, the spectator client does not feel good at all. My settings have changed for sure because I usually keep this at seventy. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. All right, I am playing on a different server entirely from what I typically play on, um, or I'm spectating this on a different server. So if the game looks a little weird, that's why. Um, I'm a North American, I, I play on the North American server, so, uh, and I'm currently using the EUS server to view this game. So if it looks a little weird, it's because I'm on the entire other side of the world from where I'm actually pulling this game. And I really don't want my watch on, so we're going to take this off. So, we're going to go ahead. We're going to take a look. We're going to take a look at the runes that he's running here. Uh, so, he's got Press the Attack, Presence of Mind, Alacrity, and Coup de Gras. And then he takes Biscuits and Cosmic Insight. Now, um, Biscuits and Cosmic Insight, I don't think is that great. Um... Sure, Cosmic Insight is nice if he's planning on going Gale Force, but Cookies, uh, they don't give as much sustain as you would probably like them to. I believe it's 12%, uh, or sorry, 10% missing health, um, and then some of your mana back as well. Now, the issue with that is to properly utilize the Cookies, you have to be low on HP. So what's actually better into a lane like this would actually be going uh, Second Wind and Revitalize. Second Wind because if you're getting poked, then you're actually healing back some of the missing HP every single time without having to use the cookie. And then Revitalize because anytime the Senna is going to heal, you, the heal is going to be 5% more effective. So if you're playing into poke lanes, going Second Wind Revitalize is actually super, super nice as a secondary. So what you want to be doing in this in this uh, this here is you want to yep, you want to push for level two as fast as possible, and then you want to try and shove them back. You want to so you, here you you have full access to zone them off, 
So, yeah. So here's here's what should have happened. So, so Lucian, you're you're pinging on my way, which is good, which is good. So you're pinging on my way. You want to hit level two. You wanna you wanna go in, right? So here's the deal. So Brand started W, which is easily dodgeable when Lucian is level two because you have your E, right? You take your E at level two. Jinx as well does not have any skill shots, so you don't have to worry about dodging anything from her. The only thing that you have to worry about, get one auto attack off and then dash in and then try to get your PTA. If you can't do that, just dash in, double auto Q, double auto. And then you have you have a press C attack on them, you have four auto attacks and you have your Q. And so what you should do here is basically just, yeah, just walk through the W, just walk through the W, dash onto these guys and just start hitting them. Or even right here, if you if you didn't dash through right there, you can just dash onto her because she's level one. She's about to hit level two, but if you dash forward, she gets zoned out of the experience range for this minion. So she won't hit level two and you get to chunk her for free because Jinx cannot trade here. She cannot trade at all. Brand, obviously, his W is down. He just used it on you. You know that. They have no they have no cooldowns. The only things that they have are summoner spells. So you can dash through right here. You can do all the damage you want to her, especially the fact that she just got slowed right there by getting the uh, getting the uh, the soul pulled from her. Um, so in case you didn't know that, Senna actually slows somebody by, I think it's 20% whenever she pulls a soul. Um, 10%. So... They get slowed by 10% whenever she pulls a soul. And so what I would have recommended is just go fully aggressive right there. You could have chunked her down another 150 to 200 HP. That would have instantly won you the lane. And it, or um, at the very least, it would have forced her to pump out two pots, at which point you would have been in pretty much sole control of the laning phase because you would have had an additional two pots over her and she wouldn't have been able to come back from it. Um, again, so she only has bloodline. She has bloodline, but... She doesn't have any stacks on it, so she's not going to be healing up at all. So that's what I would have recommended. Also in this lane, I wouldn't have recommended going Exhaust because it is really hard for you to actually properly utilize Exhaust against their entire team. You're not going to really be using it on Orn or Nunu. The only really the only people that you can use it on is their mid or the bot lane. And it's really hard to actually properly utilize it on something like a Brand or a Jinx because Jinx is typically going to be out of range of your Exhaust because I think Exhaust is a 600 range uh, circle and Jinx can easily stand outside of that range. Um, Nico, sure, when she, you know, if she were to root you and she goes in for an ult, that's, you know, maybe the best time. But at that point, maybe cleanse is better so that way you can get out of stuns, um, roots, anything that they will throw at you. Um, but in this specific lane, I think heal is just better. Um, so when you're loading into a game and you see people that, you know, a couple tanks and then everybody else is primarily going to be outside of the range of your exhaust, I would recommend just running kill. And so here we've got this. Also, one thing with Lucian as well, um, any little damage that you can drop off of somebody, that, that makes your laning phase so much easier. So your Q has a pretty big range on it, actually. So it's got a, it's got an it's got a range already of like 550, but then it extends all the way up to 1100. Uh, I believe it's 1100 range if you Q through a minion, you know? So um, so anytime that you're kind of walking up, if you're walking up to waves like this, you can Q, if you're standing like here, you can Q this minion and you can actually chunk them a little bit. Your Q does about 100 damage right now, um, and then with their armor, probably drops it down to about 85, 86, somewhere in there. Um, but that is something that Lucians really need to look at, is trying to Q through minions in order to properly uh, utilize the poke damage that they can put out. And then also, uh, right here, you guys do need to be careful. There should already be a ward placed up in this tri-bush. The second that you cross this middle threshold, you need to try and ward this tri-bush. Reason being, the uh, this scuttle ha doesn't spawn for another 30 seconds, right? You don't know if this guy is top side or bot side because you have no proper vision on him, but better safe than sorry, you wanna ward this tri-bush so that way if you do see, if he does end up coming bot, you can see it and then you can back off. So anytime that you pass this threshold here, just walk up and drop a ward there. Because I know, because, so you don't have a ward right now. I don't know where you play, oh, you placed it in here, okay. So I would refrain from using wards inside of these bushes, especially in the early game. Um, yes, sure, they're decent to get brush control, but it's your support's job to get brush control. 
So I would refrain from using it, especially on these bushes, this middle bush here, because there's very little information that, there is almost no information that you're gonna gather from this middle bush here. So it's better to save your wards for river vision or this bush vision. And then if you don't have a ward yourself, ping this right here. So ping your, uh, basically just pull up your scoreboard and ping the trinket ward that Senna has and then ping up here or type in chat, go, hey, can you go ward tribush please? And then Senna can run up, she can ward tribush. And then that way, when this gank does happen here, you see him start to come in and you would see if you have a ward you would see him right now and then you would be able to start backing off but instead instead you guys are trying to shove this in but you're actually just last hitting stuff so a you're not getting it shoved and b you're, you're about to get the gauge on and yeah so now you're dead so if you're playing an aggressive champion like lucian you really need to be you really need to be mindful of where the jungler is at and if you don't know where the jungler is at make sure that you keep vision in the places where the jungler is going to be um i like what you're doing here you're pulling the wave how's this thing go down yeah so you're pulling the wave now what i would expect you to do here is just permanently last hit this wave because this is actually frozen so this is going to deny about this is going to deny at least one full wave of CS from the Jinx in the brand, um, both CS and XP. So I like what you're doing. Just keep the wave frozen. So you need to hit some of the melees as well. You need to get them a lower. Um, yep. Nope. This is good. This is good. Good job. Good job. And then four minions. Yep. yep. So. So now at this point, you know that the enemy bot lane has no exhaust. So at some point, if you guys do end up feeling like you have a level lead or you have a damage lead, you can actually take fights. Um, the brand is actually the squishier one of the two, but basically you just need to make sure. You're... So see, that's that's not a good trade there because you basically dashed into range of both of them. You don't want to be in a spot where you can get hit by both champions at the same time because if you're getting hit by if you're just trading one on one you're gonna out trade the jinx every time but if you're getting hit by both of them there's nothing you can do so what i would recommend is refrain from actually dashing them, especially there's there's four minions here so the second that you auto attack her all four of these minions are going to turn and start hitting you and then the brand is also just right in the same range pattern as the jinx is so you need to be careful on that because of the fact that brand has a lot of damage that he can just output with like he doesn't need to hit skill shots at all. He can just hit maybe an E, or he can hit a W if he wants, but he has the blaze passive, and then he'll have dark harvest as well. So, um, anytime that you're going to be going in, just make sure that you're not able to be hit by both people at once, because you're going to lose a lot of health if that happens, i.e. this. So this is, this is what happens when you start losing a lot of health. So this ward is pretty good because, you, well, you do know where the jungler is at, so it's not entirely necessary, but when you're under tower and you're low on HP, you do want to be able to see whether or not the jungler is going to come gank you. So what a technically better ward is this bush right here, because if the jungler is coming through and they don't have any wall, like, uh, they don't have any way to jump the wall, right? Then warding this one, it lets you be able to see them really early on whether or not they're coming in because if you're catching them right here and it's a new snowballing in you're not really going to be able to get out but if you catch them right here um walking into the river or walking into the jungle right here then you have a much a much better chance of walking away and not dying um this game as well i would re i would recommend uh opting into kraken slayer reason being you're going to have three people on the team that are going to have some armor so both the top lane and the jungler are going to probably well i know the top lane for sure and then nunu is probably going to go uh something like a sunfire um or a frostfire gauntlet so having um yeah pretty decent cs to pick up so having the third auto and the additional attack speed is really nice for that but having cosmic insight doesn't help you with that at all so um cosmic insight would be really nice if you were to have gale force sure because you get the summoner nature sorry to the item haste but um it's not the end of the world if you go um if you go kraken slayer it gives you a lot more damage to those tanks all right let's see let's see what we're gonna do here so we know that nidalee is coming in here 
So what needs to happen is Senna actually needs to walk up here a little bit more. Wow, that's really sucky. So you need to save your E to make sure. Okay, so yeah, that's what that's what we don't do there. So this is a free kill if you just clean this up slightly mechanic. So what you do here instead of using your E is you use your W because you're already in range. And people heavily underestimate the damage that a Lucian W does because it's pure magic damage. So AD carries are not going to have magic resist, right? They're typically going to have armor. So it does 75 magic resist. And then with, uh, you know, with, with the base magic resist, you're probably looking at like 60, ma or 60 magic damage. That going to do. But that's additional damage that you're outputting. Whereas with your E, you're not outputting any additional damage. The only thing you're getting is you're getting the dash and then you're getting access to the passive auto attacks. But with Lucian, if you use the W and you, you then you get magic damage applied, so you get about 60, 65 damage, plus you still get access to passive. So you're already in range. So what you should do is you should auto and then you should W right there. And then you, you W and then the second that your next two auto attacks start going off, you press Q because your second auto attack will then proc your press the attack and then your Q will then do the mass first damage and then you can use your E to dodge the sap. So the reason why, the only reason that you live here was because you exhausted and you did get, you got hit by everything. So if you didn't get hit by everything and you saved your E to actually dodge the zap, that's how you actually kill this here because look, you're walking away and you still have your W up. If you were to use your W on her, she's dead. If you were to, if you were to auto W, double auto Q, double auto dodge zap with E, double auto, she's dead. So, and then that's 300 gold in your pocket. So that's just something that you can use to clean it up uh, slightly mechanically. You just clean it up mechanically on your part. Um, just a small like little Lucian combo. Um, I guess something to think about because a lot of people think that his dash is one of the best ways to get damage off. It's not. It's actually an auto W, double auto Q. That's the highest combo variant that you can use for the fastest damage possible. Um, because your E is really good for repositioning and gap closing um, and dodging dodging skill shots, but it offers you no additional damage aside from just getting the passive auto. So your W is actually, uh, it's a great way to go for that. Um, so it looks like a lot of your problems in this game specifically are stemming off of your laning phase um, because I've seen, I've seen a couple times where you can either um, where you can either maximize, either increase your damage output, or just straight up win the lane off of a couple, a couple mechanic plays. Um, here, here you definitely need a ward somewhere. So you have a ward. So when you come back, right? So when you're on your way back. So I don't know if you guys know if they're doing dragon or not, but at this point right here, you know that they do dragon, right? So you know that they've taken dragon and you're up here. So immediately they're going to try to look to gank you, right? And it, you can see it right here. So if you're paying attention to your mini map or you're looking up at all, you see you're about to get ganked. But you start walking towards the mini maps. So what I would recommend is when you're walking down here, the second that you see the dragon dies, start backing up. This wave is not worth it at that point. Because if you die, you lose this, you lose this, this wave here and you lose this entire wave here because this is just going to slow push it. If you back up, worse you miss is maybe the cannon XP and like the gold on top of it. But if you just, if you back up, maybe drop a ward here. If you were to place a ward here, which I do see that you have one in your inventory at this time, you ward right here and then you see that Nunu is nowhere near and that the bot lane is walking down and Brand is in. So then at that point, you can then opt in to shove the wave on the tower or you can opt in to slow push or since you know that he's um, he can't use his W, he can only use one of his abilities. You can spam ping the Senna because you guys hard win a trade if you guys were to walk up and fight this. So you can also utilize the fact that he has no mana and he can't really do anything. So if you were to hard shove this wave and then fight them as they're entering this, you hard chunk them down and then you have two refill pots. So you hard chunk them down and then it makes any dive that she wants to do completely available, like completely open scenario. Then you can do that as well. 
But instead, uh, what you guys opted for was just to shove the wave under tower, let them be full HP, and then just free farm under the tower. Which is another issue um, that you're gonna have because especially like Jinx and Brand, they wanna scale. They wanna get out of this laning phase without dying too much. And then they wanna just, once they get two to three items, they're just gonna roll you anyways. So what you wanna do is you wanna be able to put them behind as much as possible. You wanna be able to kill them, you wanna be able to get a CS lead. So that way Lucian is actually able to do his, his job inside of a game. Uh, which is actually do a lot of damage, rotate around, kill people, chunk people out, take towers in the early mid game. At this point, you're not going to be able to do that because the Jinx is too, you guys are too weak and you're not able to output as much damage. Um, so, Senna played that pretty poorly, I'll say. Um, I also didn't like what happened here. So, so, what you guys can do here is you know that Nidalee's coming in. So what you two, both of you need to do, you can even do this without Senna, is start walking down into the bush because you know that he has no mana and you know that he has no W up. So, so here, watch this, watch this. So we'll watch Brand for a second, right? So no W and you know that's a fairly long cooldown and then no E, right? He has no abilities, this champion is useless. So you know that he doesn't have that. Or sorry, no, sorry, right here, right here. So he has no E. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. I, I was correct, I was correct. So, first time around. So, he has no W, he has no E. So, at this point, you can actually opt into a trade if you were to dash on either of these guys. Neither of them can trade back from. So, since you're in this bush, she's not in range of if you're down here, right? So, you can dash onto this guy's face and just full combo. And he can't do anything about it because he has no cooldowns. And you know that he has no cooldowns. And then she's outside of the range, so she can't even affect it. She can't, she can't affect the fight. So you just do a short little trade, and then you walk back. And then right here, you guys shouldn't be this far back because you're seeing that Nidalee is coming in. So you see that she jumps the wall. You guys need to immediately be pushing down towards this Jinx or towards the brand. And so I'm not quite sure where uh, Senna threw her W, but yeah, she needed to not throw that. And then you should have been walking down around this way rather than walking up here because this, this you walking from here up here is actually just pushing them closer to their tower. If you were to walk down and around here, then you're spreading yourselves apart. So any AOE, because both of these champions are AOE, they're gonna be doing a lot of damage to you guys and you guys can, it's extremely possible that you lose the trade off of this. So if you were to push down, you can just jump on either of them and then output your damage up. But instead, you guys go up here, you get chunked, and then you just revert to start uh, CSing again. And then you guys just all get chunked out, you lose the trade, you lose the gang, and then, yeah, that's the other thing. So that was an opportunity for you guys to kill them as well, or force out flashes. But you guys, you and Santa needed to walk down while Middle East pushing from the top. See, that's, that's a good trade, but that needs to be followed up. So here we have, we have you. So this is going to be something similar. So your E comes up, right? And so you're in range. So what you do is you auto auto and then you Q. But look, he has no mana once again. He can only use one ability. This is this is a point for you to actually force out her flash or completely kill her. So what you can do here again is a small, small mechanical thing where you can dash in, you can double auto, you can use your W double auto to proc your PTA and then you can Q. And then one more double auto and she's dead. So she actually has to either flash there or just die. So I do like I do like the play, but you need to keep going on that one. There. Um, you need to you need to learn the champion's limits, especially seeing that these guys both have like no mana and they're level five, so they don't have access to their ultimates. They're missing out on damage. They're missing out on mana. So um, yeah, I think I think this game was heavily carryable just from just from the lane phase, just from just from literally changing a little bit. Of Bit of the phase. And that's one of the main things that a lot of AD carries need to work on is their landing phase and actually being able to properly utilize what you need. Okay, that's good. Let's see if we can refine it. So, we need to be moving this way. So, if we move... How do I do this? Whoa, this... Four. Yeah. So if we're moving this way, right? If we're moving down this way, 
we can actually start to cut them off a little bit rather than go this way because if we're if we're pathing down towards them they're going to start walking back this way and then you have no way to actually stick on them if you're going this way you're able to actually push them down towards this way and then that actually makes their walk longer because they have to walk it down and all the way through rather than just having a straight shot so if you're like this and you're pathing you you dash this way and you're down on top of them you're going to permanently be able to hit them all the way back to their tower so rather than dashing down do i put this up like that so see they are going to be able to walk through okay so you have your dash here i'm not sure why you took so long to use it so your dash needs to be used about the time that Senna ult is going off here. And then you have two kills. So this starts to go off. So you W. You have all of your abilities here. So what you need to do is you need to W. And then you need to... So you need to auto W. And then you need to dash in. Double auto this guy. Q the Jinx. Because he would be, he would be dead right here. And so instead, you end up just getting one of the kills. Where you could have gotten two if you utilized your dash in your so if you open up the fight with an auto, double E, double auto, E, double auto, and then, then Brand's dead, and then you can use your Q on the Jinx, and then you're old. And then you have two kills there, that's 600 gold in your pocket, and then you can possibly get like two plates off of this, maybe one. Okay, you're just going to opt on a reset. So I'm assuming that you have your mythic item here. No? Okay, close to, close to, what are we looking at? So you're still 400 off, okay. But, yeah, okay. So I'm going to stop it here. Because this is pretty, well actually, let me see. So that's lethal right there. Okay, Never mind. I'm not gonna stop it. So right here, you know that Brand isn't here, right? You see their entire team. You see their jungler, you see their top laner. The only person you don't see is the mid laner, but you know that the mid laner is going to be going back to here to fight this fight. So you have you have full you have full abilities to just kill this shit. So what you can do is you can you can do that, but again you should use your W and save your Q for after the press the attack proc, and you can actually just flash this right here. And what you can do then is you can kill her if not if you don't kill her you force up the heal. Otherwise you just straight up kill her. Um, but I'm pretty sure even with the Q, you still, even with her heal going, you still kill her there. So that's something where you definitely could have gone in and you could have killed her. Um, here, you need, to, you need to move. You need to move up here. So, yep, okay, good, good, good. So that's a kill on either of these guys. So you have, you have full abilities. So I want to see auto W, E, Q. Okay, so, yeah. So another refinement. Most of your stuff that I'm seeing here is coming down to just really small mechanical misplays. Um, they're not huge. They're not huge misplays, but they're small mechanical misplays that can get that can get you a lot of kills. So if you were to auto, so I'll show you where. So you have full abilities here. If you auto W right here. And then you W, and then you get your pressy attack off of the W proc, and then you E in, literally onto him, and then you Q. So that way you're basically melee. And then here you can actually open up with your ultimate too. Even at, even if you were to do this, you can open up with your ultimate on either of these guys and you can get a kill. But instead you back off and you just decide to give it over to your support, which this the gold is always going to be better on you than your support. So I don't know why you decided to back off and not get either of the kills. Um, so that's a small mechanical change that I would make. Um, again, just auto, W, dash in, auto, Q, auto, and then you can use your ultimate. Um, yeah, no, I think you're playing fine. I just think that a lot of this is due to just small mechanics. And then you get Gale Force. I don't necessarily agree with Gale Force on tracking here better than the fact that they have double tanks and then Nico is probably going to go Zanyas and then Brand might go Zanyas as well. It's just really, it's really nice for, for, for killing tanks. Turret plating will soon fall.
but and then you need to be careful here because you're obviously you're alone. So you need to go back. Yep, yep, that's fine. That's fine. And then you're you're fine. You're fine just staying in XP range on this tower and just trying to last it. You don't need to get chunked like that. Yeah. So that's yeah. So you did not need to get yeah. You didn't need to get chunked like that. And then you can flash that as well. So you do not need to walk up to this wave right when this is coming up. So you can give these two minions, it's not the end of the world, stay in XP range, get the XP. Um, and just, yeah, yeah you, you don't need to be taking this much damage for it. You can, you can give a wave of gold, just keep the XP, stay in XP range. But honestly, yeah, I think this game is basically the only reason you didn't win this one is because of the waiting phase. Um, and so I'm going to actually show you I'm going to show you what I mean by uh, that specific combo that I talked about a lot during that game. I'm going to go onto my account and I'll show you. I'll show you exactly what the uh, what the combo is and what it looks like and how I uh, how it's effective. Oops. And in what situations it's effective as well. Man, I didn't stay signed in. That's upsetting. This is taking a minute. All right. But, uh, yeah, overall, I think you were playing fairly decent um, throughout the laning phase. Um, the Your farming is definitely, definitely good, especially for a gold player. Um, your CS, you're, you're, able, you're able to... You're able to gather as, pretty much as much CS as you, as you possibly can throughout the laning phase, and that's very good. Um, most players can't do that. I don't know why my camera... Focus, camera. Okay, sort of. So we're going to go Lucian. And we're going to go. And then that game, I actually, I would have recommended Second Wind and Revitalize because with cookies, sure, you're getting, um, you're getting percent missing health and mana back. So 10% of your missing health and mana and then it increases your cap by 50. Sure, that's nice, whatever. Not that big of a deal. Because if you go in and you get second wind, you actually get 4% of your missing health back plus six over 10 seconds. Now this happens like every single time you take damage. So that's what's nice about that. Cookies is only three times. This is every time you take damage. And then revitalize, you're playing with a Senna. So any heal and shields you receive or give are 5% better. Or sorry, 5% if you... Um, if you're healing and then the ones that you receive are 10% stronger um, below 40% HP. So Senna um, healing you 10% more effective if you're under 40%, 5%, you know, if not. Um, but otherwise I would recommend like Taste of Blood Ravenous Hunter, but just for, just for the sake of argument, I'm going to go with, actually, I'm going to go with exactly what you went with. Actually, I don't know if you went Bloodline or Lacrimy, but whatever. So if we're going to go with dies, this. I would have recommended heal that game as well instead of exhaust, but, you know, it's, it's whatever. It's not that big. Um, sorry if I'm talking really fast, by the way. I do talk quite fast a lot of the times. So it's a, it's a blessing and a curse sometimes. <laughs> but I'm going to show you what I mean uh, by this because this is a way that you can really maximize your damage. And I'm going to compare damage numbers as well. So I'm going to do a combo that you did throughout the game. And then I'm going to do a combo that I would recommend instead. So we're going to go with, uh, we're going to add some gold. We're going to level up to level four. And then we're going to go, I don't know, we're going to go level five. And then we're going to go uh, double long sword and this pretty much, right? That's, uh, is that about a normal level five? I think it is, right? Maybe? Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Yeah, we'll, we'll just say that that's normal there. So we're going to teleport over here and we are going to so spawn in the So what you were doing is you were basically, so there's a couple combos that you can do. One is that. So you're looking at a total of 330 damage, right? Um, let's auto refresh. So 330 damage. So, a man so 330, let's keep that in mind, okay? Shadow. 330. Now, another one that you can do 
in almost the same amount of time is W. So 807, right? So that's the one that I would recommend that I was recommending that you use because if you're if you're within range and you're going like this, you're getting 672 off without using your W, right? But if you were to auto W, boom, 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 910. Like the damage that you can do is so much higher with this combo because of the fact that your Q, so going press the attack, you want to be able to use the, you want to be able to use damage after you already pop press the attack. Reason being, press the attack grants, uh, what is it, 9%? Yeah. So it scales with levels. It's like, uh, it's, I, is it 6% to 12% or is it 8% to 12%? I think it's 8% to 12%. Um, I believe it's 8% to 12%. So at my specific time right now, it's 9% from all sources for six seconds. So what that means is that your Q is going to do an additional six or nine percent of damage. I remember right? the devil's So eyes. it's better Red for your sundown. Q to do a nine per, an extra an additional nine percent of damage than your W to do an additional nine percent of damage. Reason being, you max your Q first. So at this point in the game, it does 188 physical damage, and 187. You know, obviously he doesn't have any armor, yeah. and then the W does 75. Can't shoot so, your way to salvation. Which one do you want to do 9% more, right? So obviously 9% of 188 is higher than 9% of 75. So it's better to go like this, boom, 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 right? So 807 if you're just going to be opening up like that without an auto auto attack before. It. But if you open up with an auto attack beforehand, like I was recommending, my the shadow's phase, getting ready. Auto W, auto auto. <laughs> Oh, my PTA hadn't reset. Never mind, that's my bad. So let me wait for PTA to get off. Yep. Okay. So you auto W, auto auto, E, auto auto, Q, auto auto. 910. It's so much higher than the combos that you were doing throughout the game. Because I guarantee you, like a combo like this, 672, you would want the additional 250 damage on there, 240 damage, right? That's going to help you throughout the laning phase to actually chunk your opponents down. Or sometimes it's just gonna straight up kill the opponent. The things I kill deserve what they get. And then this this would have just helped in so many scenarios. And then like I was talking about at one point, uh, throughout it, fighting the jinx, there is a time where if you auto and then you use your E, now you don't have your E, right? This is this is your dash, this is your gap closer, this is your repositioner, right? You can't, the there's no way for you to they dodge something without sidestepping it now, right? And without boots, that's fairly difficult to do. So if you were to auto and then W, and then even if you were to Q right there and then do that and then E, it's still the same amount of damage, but now you get to keep your E for if they throw a skill shot, then you can dodge it, right? So it's uh, it's really important that you use that the E, not just as an aggressive ability, aim. but also as a defensive ability in order to output more damage. I know that that sounds a little weird, but a lot of defensive, a lot of defensive abilities slash items allow you to actually output more damage because of the fact that you can dodge, um, you can dodge abilities, or you can take more damage, and then you can actually stay in the fight longer in order to put out a higher amount of DPS. So Devil that would be something like in that fight. Let's pretend that this is a jinx, right? You walk up, you auto W, auto auto Q, auto auto. She throws W, you dash it, and then you double auto. It. So. That's something that I would ha heavily recommend is working on uh, getting in your muscle memory is not using your to open up fights if you really don't have to. If you're already within auto range, use your other abilities first and then use your app because using your E uh, to either you know chase down a fight or reposition in a fight is much much better to use than if you were you know right here and then you use it right away and you're not dodging a single thing. So. That's that's one of my takes, and that's that's a small like little combo change that I would recommend uh, for you to, to kind of mess around with with Lucian, because you know his combos aren't super super hard to uh, to get into stuff to kind of get built into your muscle memory, and they're not super hard to execute either. But it's uh, it's super nice when you're actually able to utilize it properly. And obviously, you know, a reckoning's it, coming. they're situational, you know, because if you're outside, if you're outside of auto range and you can't hit somebody and you really need to dash and do that, you can. But if you're already within auto range, use your other two abilities first and then use your E 
to reposition to dodge a skill shot or even to get out of a fight. Sometimes I'll use it, I'll walk up, I'll go like this, boom, 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 and I'll dash out. And then they, they're they not able to properly trade with me anymore, you know, because I just I just exited the fight. So you can, you can do like even a short trade like that and just dash out. So that's something that, that you can do sometimes as well. Just get creative with some of your... Uh, um, with some of your combos, but the highest, the absolute highest DPS one early no game is auto, W, boom, 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 boom. That is your highest DPS that you can possibly put out. The highest possible one. Um, so that's, that's what I would recommend doing is working on a combo where you use your, you use your W to open up. Um, also something that not a lot of people know about either, I guess, is... Um, Lucian W actually reveals people. So if somebody walks into a bush, right? So like, let's say that somebody's walking up into a bush, you can use your W to actually see them, you know? So you can you can open up with it like that, which is something that not a lot of people know about. So you can do like a little combo like that as well. Um, but not a lot of people utilize your w like that so i i'm a i'm a heavy i'm a heavy uh what, what's the uh, what's the term uh i don't know but i don't i don't remember what the term is but i am a i'm a firm believer that w on lucian is one of the most underrated abilities uh in his kit it definitely helps especially because even if you're hitting somebody you actually get movement speed as well so it helps with your attract with your chase down as well so if you open up with it it helps you chase them down um or even run away too so um, open up with your W and then use your Q or try to use your Q after the press the attack has already popped. You will you'll get so many more kills if you're able to get this combo down. I I promise. Um, but yeah, anyway, so this this was Pleco. I'm gonna try and get this edited down a little bit. Um, this is a little long at time at the actual recording point. It's 41 minutes. Um, my camera is way over there and my mic is over here. I probably need to switch this up because it looks like I'm not able to really talk to the camera properly. But um, yeah, this is 41 minutes. I'm probably going to edit it down a little bit. I'm uh, going to post this on my YouTube specifically just so that way uh, X Lotto or X Lalo can watch it. And um, I'll see if I'll see if uh, he's okay with me um, kind of doing it, uh, having it public as well as like a, a Lucian uh, guide as well, like combos guide and uh, laning guide um, for you know, for, uh, for different matchups like this, but, uh, yeah, so this has been Pleco. I hope that this helps you out, uh, X Lalo. I know that I didn't do the entire game, but if I were to review the entire game, it would probably be an hour to an hour and a half of just reviewing the game. And I'm a firm believer that a lot of your issues throughout a lane or throughout a game actually stem from the laning phase. And especially if you're playing a, uh, hyper aggressive, um, early and mid game champ like Lucian, a lot of your advantages should come from the laning phase. So you shouldn't be relying on scaling uh, throughout the game because you're not going to beat a six item Jinx when you're a six item Lucian, not unless you're hiding in a bush and you one shot her, right? There's no way that you're gonna beat her, uh, just front to back. So it's best to try and get your advantages early when you can. And that's why I basically just went over the laning phase and showed you what you could do to heavily pressure that lane and get an advantage in that. So I hope this helps you out, Xlalo. This has been Pleco. If you need anything else, let me know, man. Peace.